Well, hello, God bless you. Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I pray that you're having a wonderful day. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we, my friends, are going to rejoice and be glad in it. But I tell you, in my rejoicing and being glad, you have to wonder if the world has not gone stark raving mad. I mean, the devil is, uh, is on the move, but thank God, the God of the Bible outperforms him, outpaces him, outmaneuvers him, has all the power. He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. He will have the first and the last word, and everything shall be as he says uh, that it is and, and, and the way he says that it will be. Now, listen, I'm so excited about Bible study and uh, because, you know, as never before, we've got to stand on the word of God and we got to trust. Now, listen to me now. We got to trust God's truth. When, when you fail to trust God's truth and you fail to walk in a biblical worldview where you make your decisions, you, you, you do your decisions, your thinking, your actions, where you go, what you do, who you hang around with, what you say, what you believe, when you allow these things to be controlled by the scripture. And you believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he made the world and he's still in control of it. Oh my, I'm getting into this biblical worldview thing now. Uh, uh, listen, every believer has to have it because the enemy is trying to turn us away from the scriptures and turn us away from the word of God. We're in a day where we're calling right wrong and wrong right. I just happened to have right here a little story uh, from the Washington Stand. Washington Stand. And it says, uh, uh, Ephesians 6 and 13, and having done all, stand firm. Listen, now listen to this. Um, this story is dealing with monkeypox. Now you've heard about that. And uh, uh, here's the headlines. Quote, it's, quote, not moral, end of quote, to request abstinence to stop monkeypox. It's not moral to request abstinence to stop monkeypox. This is the argument of LBGTQ activists. They're saying to ask them to stop behaving in a sexual manner that is responsible for 99% of the cases that occur uh, in our country, 99% is spread by male to male sexual contact uh, to ask them not to have sex. They're saying that that's an immoral request. Now, now, uh, during COVID, they ask all of us, wear masks, uh, uh, get, get the shot, do this and do that. And, and, and there's no real evidence that uh, the mask uh, prevented anything. We all know our president has all the shots and all the boosters, all of them according to what he says, and he still got COVID. And yet people still fell in line and walked in lockstep. But the evidence is overwhelming that if you just stop having uh, homosexual sex with each other, uh, uh, that would stop the spread of monkeypox. And I, I find it interesting that when the news reports it, the news says, you know, monkey, monkeypox is spread by men having sex with men. Well, Brother Gary, just back in June, just a, uh, uh, a, a couple months ago, uh, that was LBGTQ plus month. All you saw was pride this, pride that, gay this, gay that, everywhere. Well, why not, why not say monkeypox is spread by men who participate in homosexual sex, in gay sex? You know, I don't call them that, but that's, these are your words. But no, no, they say men who have sex with men. Among, let me read this, among U.S. Uh, monkeypox cases with 
Available data, 99% occurred in men, 94% of whom reported recent male-to-male sexual and close intimate contact. That is, recent male-to-male homosexual sex. Gay, that's your word, not mine, sex. So why, why say male-to-male? Be consistent with your labeling. Look at this. Within three weeks before they developed symptoms. So some of you who are watching this right now, if you're not living holy, and well, mine was, I was with that guy two weeks ago. You got one more week to go uh, before you'll know whether or not you got it. And and if, if, if there have been other partners, you, you're going to be in trouble. Look at this. Of that number, one third of men say that they had had sex with five or more partners in the previous three weeks. What? Look at this. And all 27% had sex with one other male sexual partner. 40% reported two to four partners, 14% reported five to nine partners, and 19%, nearly one in five, reported uh, 10 or more sexual partners within the previous 21 days. What in the world is going on? This is evil, this is immoral, and now they're saying you shouldn't ask us to stop behaving like this so that we can, uh, to, to give the government time and, and uh, science and medicine and biology time to catch up with what is necessary to stop the spread. The report also noted that monkeypox infections often took place in group settings. 33% reported group sex. Look at this. And uh, defined as sex with more than two persons uh, at a festival, group sex events, at a festival, group sex events, or sex party. So I guess you got a festival where you have sex, group sex events, Sex party, according to CDC data, which cover uh, May 17th through July the 22nd. Last little thing, the Biden administration survey confirmed a study published in the New England General, Journal of Medicine last month, which found 98% of the persons with infections were, they, they, they had to say it, gay and bisexual, and that transmission was suspected to have occurred through sexual activity in 99% of the persons with the infections. You think? Listen, when you disobey God, look at the things that happen, and now the people are saying that we should not, you sh it's, it's, un, it's, it's, un, it's, it's not moral to suggest that, that they stop having sex uh, when the whole thing is immoral uh, from, from, from the get-go. The Bible is right on these things, my friends. I bring them before you because you know what? If we don't talk about it, all people are going to do is hear about this stuff from the point of view of the world. And, and did you know that the overwhelming majority, like between 94 and 95 percent, of 99% of, of the people who got get monkeypox are homosexual. You know, have you noticed the attempt of the media through their pedagogy and the way they report their stories? And some of them just come out and make you think that it's, it's something that is, that's for the general population. And I perhaps, I think they, they, they talk that way, hoping that that becomes the case. I want to say to you, stay holy, serve the Lord, walk upright, and God will keep you. And if anybody's out there who is in, uh, uh, participating in this r risky, godless behavior, repent and the Lord will save you. Now, I'm running out of time, but I wanted to mention something. You know, Roe v. Wade was overturned. Thank God, thank God. Now, you've watched on television as certain ones have had conniption fits and, oh, they've, they, they, they've, they've just, they, they've blown, they've blown gaskets. They've blown fuses. Ah, ah, this is attacking a woman's right to choose. When the truth is, the simple truth is, uh, it doesn't ban abortion. I wish that it did. You, you know my position on it, but it doesn't. It sends it back to the states and each state 
will decide. I found it interesting the way Gretchen uh, uh, Whitmer of Whitmer Whitmer of uh, the great state of Michigan, she's the governor, responded to uh, Roe being overturned. Whitmer to veto adoption, abortion alternative funds from Michigan budget. Because you can't have the women giving birth to their babies in Michigan, especially the little black ones. Widmer to sign 77 billion budget, 77 billion dollar budget, but vetoed several items. The governor says funds would promote, this is a quote, anti-choice programs like adoption marketing and tax credit. Adoption marketing now is viewed as an anti-choice program? To choose adoption now makes you anti-choice? And to give tax credits to people who choose not to slaughter their babies is now anti-choice? Didn't they make a choice? If you choose to adopt, isn't that a choice? If there is a tax credit that will uh, help you if you choose to give life, isn't that a choice? Or is it is the only choice that uh, this governor wants to protect is the choice to kill the child. Right to life slams Whitmer for expected veto of tax credits for adoptive parents. Lan Listen, Lansing, I'm almost done, I'm almost done, I'm going too long. Lansing, when Democratic uh, Governor Retchen Whitmer finishes signing a nearly 77 billion, billion Michigan budget later this week, it won't include millions of dollars in funding the Republican-led legislature that had included, had, look, that had included to promote alternatives to abortions. Now, there are those who say, well, uh, the Republicans care about the baby before they're born, but they don't care anything about them after they're born. All right. They wanted to have to have uh, uh, options included that would uh, uh, promote alternatives to abortions, which means that it would help. Um, citing anti-choice concerns, Whitmer's office announced Monday she will use her line item veto power to strike more than 21 million in funding from a general government budget bill. That includes 10 million Republicans had included for marketing programs that promote adoption. Everybody who's watching this, who's born again, you, my friends, and I were adopted. The, the original children of the Jew, of Jesus Christ and of God the Father were the Jews. We were grafted in, according to the Bible, we were adopted in, whereby we received the spirit of adoption and we cry, Abba, Father. My God, I've been adopted into the family of God. And this lady, she cuts uh, 10 million uh, of, uh, from program promoting adoption as an alternative to abortion, 2 million in tax credit for abortive parents, and 3 million for a uh, maternal navigator pilot program that would be run by a nonprofit that promotes childbirth as an alternative to an abortion. Now, can you believe that a woman would do such a thing? Uh, uh, the Supreme Court over turn Roe v. Wade. These people in Michigan who wants to help and let babies live had nothing to do with that. And if they had, do you become so petty that your response to uh, the Supreme Court overturning legislation that had no constitutional footing anyway, do you respond by being petty and say, well, I'm going to cut funding that's in the bill that will help people who choose, choose to adopt. 
choose to adopt. Help people, these, these pregnancy programs, these are wonderful uh, program pregnancy resource centers. These, she cut 1.5 million from that budget. These pregnancy resource centers helps little girls. A great number of them, my friends, look just like you and me. In fact, the overwhelming majority that gets help from these places are black. So I guess we can't, we can't, them evil Republicans, by the way, I'm neither, I'm neither. So I'm not uh, advocating any particular party. But I'm talking about an action. See, this to me doesn't represent a party. It represents an action. Now, if the part, if a particular party lines up behind this action, this is a godless action. And this was a godless move on her part. I don't know, I don't, I don't know if everything about it is godless, but I know this. No matter what program a politician may be in favor of to help the poor and help black folk and help us, you know. None of those things work if you don't get to be born. And it's time for the church to say these things and to say it loud and clear and say it as loudly and as often as possible because we serve a holy God. We serve a righteous God. And we serve a God who teaches that if we sow to the wind, we will reap the whirlwind. And I believe, my friends, we're beginning to see the chickens coming home to roost. I believe we're seeing the, the, the reaping of bad policies. So we need to pray. And I'm praying for you. And I tell you, we're going to walk in the scriptures tonight. And we're going to talk about being on the God side of things. I'm excited. I'm excited. As a matter of fact, I'm as fired up as I can be. So I've gone too long, way too long. Have you noticed I've been creeping up my time in these little promos. So let me, uh, I, I may go back to next week. Pray for me. I may just come on and say, hey, this is Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. And we're having church tonight at the Upper Room Church of God of Christ. And I want you to come and join me. Now, you know that that's not likely that that's going to happen, but I'm going to try to do it. I love you. Join me tonight for Bible study. <laughs> Man, I laugh at myself, Gary. Bible study. We're going to study the word of the Lord together, and I am going to show you in Scripture. Scripture, one of the great biblical teachings and keys to guaranteed happiness in Christ. I'll see you tonight.